You know, I made a lot of videos about StreamerBot, but I never actually explained to you how to actually set it up and get it working with your OBS Studio. And I'm gonna rectify that today. Not only am I gonna show you how to set it up and get it working, but on top of that, I'm gonna make it look so easy. That's right, I'm gonna beat the intimidating allegations against StreamerBot. Oh, and you probably heard of Mix It Up, which is an alternative to StreamerBot. If you want to see a video on that, my friend Truy just dropped a setup video on Mix It Up. So go check that out. This is a brand new computer, so you can follow along as we set up StreamerBot for the first time. First of all, let's download it. Open up your favorite browser, type streamer.bot. It's gonna bring you here and all you have to do is click streamer.bot right there. Pick somewhere you're gonna find and click save. If at any point you feel lost, you can still go back here and click on docs. And here you're gonna find everything you need, including how to set it up. But we already established that you love it when I explain things. Anyways, go find that file that you just downloaded and you're gonna see that it's a compressed file. It has a little zip on the folder here. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna click extract all. Here you can pick wherever you want it to extract. I'm just gonna click extract. Now it created a folder called streamer.bot. You're gonna find the one that says streamer.bot it's in application and you're gonna double click on that oh would you look at that it opens up streamer bot and it's that easy so congrats on the first few steps you now have streamer bot on your computer now if i were you i would probably right click on this and pin it to the start so next time i want to launch it it's going to be here you can also put it on your desktop there are two things that we need to do first we want to connect streamer bot to our obs studio and then we need to connect streamer bot to our twitch then i'll explain how it works so first of all all of those scary little tabs you can actually hide them you can right click and pick the ones that you want to show. The truth is we're not gonna use most of them, like the big majority. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically turn off a bunch of them. I'm not saying you should do that, but just for the sake of clarity, we're gonna keep it at a minimum. Another thing you can do is actually click on the tabs and drag them around. So let's go to stream apps. Why? Because OBS, for example, is a stream app. Make sure you select OBS. If you're using Streamlabs, that's also a thing. Polypop, also a thing. Click OBS, right click in the blank here, and we're gonna click add. So the way that StreamerBot communicates with OBS is through something called a web socket. You can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it OBS. Then for the information here, we want to put version five. And I personally like to put auto reconnect on startup and auto reconnect or reconnect on disconnect and then put five seconds just in case. Then the only thing you need to remember is the port 4455, right? Go back to OBS studio. Then you're gonna go to tools and we're gonna find our WebSocket server settings. It's gonna look like that. We're going to enable the WebSocket server. We're gonna make sure that our server port is 4455. We're gonna turn off authentication unless you really want a password in that case, do your thing. And we're gonna click apply. Let's make sure we finish creating this in streamer bot. Click okay. I'm gonna right click and click connect. As you can see on the right side, we're gonna have current scene intermission, so it knows what's happening on my OBS Studio. We are officially connected. Bottom right, you'll also have an indicator for that. Back in OBS Studio, we'll see proof that we are connected by this thing appearing, and we can click OK, and congrats. You can now control OBS with StreamerBot. We just need to link our Twitch channel, or YouTube channel, if that's your thing. Now that my connection is done, I'm gonna right click and basically turn off stream apps, because we don't need it anymore. Now let's go to platforms, and this is where we're gonna find Twitch. We're going to have a bunch of tabs. We're going to go to accounts and you're going to see broadcaster account and bot account. This can be handy if you have a separate account that you use for your bot. But in our case, we're going to focus on our broadcaster account. Click login and it's going to open a page with your Twitch channel and it's going to ask you to authorize. So let's go ahead and bloop, congrats. We are logged in. You're going to see your channel appear here and then bottom right, you'll see connected to. That means OBS and Twitch. And from that same platform's Twitch tab, you can find channel point rewards. And it actually imported all of mine. <laughs> Anyways, so the setup was easy. Just two things to connect and then boom, StreamerBot is up and ready. But how does it work? StreamerBot uses actions and those are basically a group of tasks. So let's go to the actions tab. So you can create an action, for example, right click, add, and I'm going to call it camera blink. Okay. Now in camera blink, I'm going to have sub actions. This is where I'm going to tell it exactly what to do. In this case, if I wanted my camera to blink, it would probably be something like, hey, turn off the camera wait a couple seconds and turn it back on. Let me add my camera for this analogy to make sense. So what we need to do is under sub actions, we need to right click and figure out what controls the visibility of my camera. So obviously it's gonna be in OBS. My camera is merely a source and all the way at the bottom, we're gonna see set source visibility state. Let's click on that and it's gonna ask you exactly which source would you like to change the visibility of? The scene I'm currently on is called intermission. My camera is called the video capture device. So we're gonna choose accordingly, video capture device, and the state is visible. That's not what we want. We want it to turn it off at first. So state hidden, okay. This is when we want it to wait 
like two seconds, right? So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna find a word that also means wait in computer jargon. Uh, that word is delay. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to core, click on delay, and I'm gonna set it to 2000 because that is in milliseconds, like it says right there. Click OK. Now you can right click and go find the source visibility state again, or you can just duplicate the first one. Scroll down, right click on it, scroll down, duplicate sub action double click on it to bring up the properties and then change state to visible visibility state hidden wait two seconds visibility state visible and this group of sub actions is called camera blink right okay so that's how you get streamer about to do all the fancy things the one thing that you need to know is that the actions are usually separated from the triggers meaning that camera blink that i just created that does all that thing i can decide whenever i want to put a different trigger for it so that means that I can create a channel point reward and tell it, hey, do the camera blank action. I can also make a chat command and be like, hey, do the camera blank action. I can also tell streamer about, hey, every time I get a follow, do the camera blank action. So that's the big thing to know about streamer bot is that you create the actions and then you can figure out what is going to link it to what. That also means that you can have multiple triggers. You can have one action triggered by multiple things. That's why you can see up here, you can create those triggers here directly you can pick things that you already created. For example, if you created a channel point reward, you can just go and find it somewhere like channel reward, channel redemption, reward redemption, sorry. And then you would just pick from the ones that you already created, or you can also directly create it from here. Keep in mind that there's a whole tab for that. Let me cancel that. If you want action to be triggered by some sort of integration, for example, there's Kofi. Let's say that someone orders something from your shop on Kofi that would trigger the camera blank action. Someone followed you on Patreon. Someone bought you food on TreatStream. Anything you want, including someone sent a chat message. Someone gave you bits. Your mod created a poll. The poll is completed. <laughs> You're getting raided. You start a raid. You send a raid. The raid has been canceled. <laughs> anything you really want so since one of the easiest ways to show you this is through like a channel point reward so let's do that channel reward reward redemption right there and let's create an uh let's create a reward sorry i'm gonna call it camera blank i need to remember to delete that after the tutorial cool the cost the prompt this is where you describe hey it's gonna make the camera blank then cool downs you can also put them in groups blah 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 Let's click OK, click OK. And guess what? Right now, StreamerBot just went into your Twitch channel, created a reward, and it's automatically linked to that action. So if I go to my channel and I go here, I'm gonna see camera blink, new, right here. And if I click on it, my camera should blink. Redeem. Just like that, just like that, ladies and gentlemen. So now, depending on what fancy thing you want to do, you can right click on this and activate more tabs. If you want hotkeys from your keyboard to trigger some stuff, yeah, you can turn it on. You're going to go to hotkeys. The rest is very intuitive. Hey, there's a blank space. Right click to add a new hotkey. Oh my God. Add. Boom. What key? When I press zero, something happens. Or with modifiers, control, alt, control, <laughs> alt, shift, zero. I can also create a group for this. Again, those are just triggers. Click OK and congrats, you just created it. On its own, it doesn't do anything. But if I wanted to go here and under triggers, go to core, hotkeys, and hotkey press, I can select one that I already created. Remember that one? Or I can create a brand new one from here too. Let's select that one, click OK. And now if I press Control Alt, I'm trying to do it on my laptop. See, hopefully it works. I have no idea because I'm on a single screen. And that's it. That's all there is to it. All you have to do now is go and actually read all the options you have. And then you're going to get ideas. If this video is what convinces you to actually set up StreamerBot, go back, watch my other tutorials. You're going to see that all the cool effects that I've done were all pretty simple. It's always, hey, turn on a filter on this source. Turn this thing on. Turn this thing off. Move this thing out of the way. Play a sound. Wait, take a screenshot, save that screenshot, send it to my Discord. You know what? If chat types a specific word, turn off the stream. Anyway, stop sleeping on me. Subscribe.